Hello, thank you all for joining. Today, you're in for a treat as I'll be interviewing a professor built with large language models regarding some of the most pressing questions in the field of asset pricing. Let's dive right in and welcome our exciting guest, the professor. Thank you for the kind words, Vicky. I'm thrilled to finally be invited to speak on this fascinating and important topic. Feel free to ask me anything, and I'll be happy to address your questions on financial economics. I was built using a custom GPT agent on the OpenAI platform, drawing from a wealth of publicly available textbooks, PDFs, and relevant online materials accessible to OpenAI. Really looking forward to our discussion, Professor. As for me, I'm Vicky, your host for today's meeting. I'll be asking the GPT agent questions and recording the answers in full. Think of me as a curious academic, eager to explore what has been achieved in financial economics, and identify the puzzles that remain for the next generation to solve. The interview questions will be divided into four categories as follows. First, the severity and longevity of the gap between theory and empirics. Next, the missing implementation of state of nature, followed by the incompatibility of all-in flat description for heterogeneous anomalies. And then, the review of proposed hierarchical state-based asset pricing model. Let's start with the big picture overviewing the severe gap in asset pricing between the theory and empirics. Professor, what is the value versus growth anomaly and who identified it? The value versus growth anomaly, first identified by Eugene Fama and Kenneth French in their seminal 1992 paper, refers to the empirical finding that value stocks, which are characterized by high book-to-market ratios, tend to outperform growth stocks over time. This discovery challenged traditional asset pricing models like the CAP-M and led to the development of the Fama French three-factor model, which incorporates the value factor, HML, to better explain cross-sectional stock returns. The anomaly remains a significant topic of research, with ongoing debates about its causes and implications for investment strategies. For a detailed analysis, see Cochrane, 2005, chapters 20 and 21, and Back, 2010, Chapters 6 and 7. Please provide the latest, top-cited journal paper that explicitly builds the theoretical foundation for the Fama French three-factor model. Zhang, 2005. The Value Premium, Journal of Financial Economics. Zhang's paper is considered one of the most influential works in providing a theoretical basis for the value premium observed in the Fama French model. He proposes a production-based asset pricing model that links firm characteristics, such as investment and profitability, to expected returns. This model offers a risk-based explanation for the value premium by showing that value firms are riskier because they are less flexible in adjusting their investments compared to growth firms. This paper has been widely cited and is foundational in building a theoretical underpinning for the Fama French three-factor model. Does this mean that the value versus growth puzzle was solved in 2005? No. Then. Over what time frame will a theoretical model be developed for explicitly explaining the value versus growth anomaly? The time frame for developing a fully explicit theoretical model that explains the value versus growth anomaly is uncertain and remains a topic of ongoing research. While significant progress has been made in understanding the anomaly through various theoretical approaches, including risk-based models and behavioral finance, a comprehensive model that resolves the puzzle has not yet been achieved. Given the complexity of the factors involved, ranging from macroeconomic risks to investor behavior, it is likely that further research over the next decade or more will be necessary before a fully satisfactory theoretical explanation emerges. Should we just wait for the next ChatGPT version for solving the value versus growth puzzle? While future versions of ChatGPT and similar AI tools will undoubtedly enhance the efficiency and scope of financial research, solving the value versus growth anomaly requires more than just advanced computational power. AI can assist in analyzing large datasets, generating new hypotheses, and identifying patterns that may not be immediately obvious to human researchers. However, the development of a comprehensive theoretical model to explain the value versus growth puzzle will likely continue to require the deep expertise, intuition, and creativity of financial economists. Therefore, it is not advisable to simply wait for the next AI version to solve this puzzle. Instead, ongoing collaboration between AI tools and human researchers will be essential to making progress. Now, 
I would suggest we move to the next topic on state of nature. What is the state of nature concept and who introduced it in the asset pricing domain? The state of nature concept, introduced by Kenneth Arrow and Gerard de Bru in the 1950s, serves as a cornerstone in asset pricing by considering various possible future scenarios where economic outcomes could differ. By creating state contingent claims for each possible state, Arrow and de Bru developed a framework that enables the pricing of assets in a complete market where each state price reflects the cost of a payoff conditional on the realization of a specific state, thus linking asset prices to economic fundamentals. When initially introduced, the state of nature was an abstract concept. How has it been developed since then, particularly in relation to the capital asset pricing model? Please also provide the corresponding top journal paper. Since its introduction, the state of nature concept has evolved from an abstract representation of future scenarios to being more concretely applied in asset pricing models like the cap m extensions to the cap m such as the conditional cap m and the intertemporal cap m link the state of nature to observable economic conditions enabling the model to account for changing risk premia and better explain empirical phenomena the evolution includes the use of state price densities in continuous time models reflecting dynamic changes in economic risks. One of the corresponding top journal papers is by Merton, titled An Intertemporal Capital Asset Pricing Model, from 1973, published in Econometrica. This paper extends the traditional CAP-M to an intertemporal setting, incorporating state-dependent risk factors and providing a more sophisticated framework for linking asset prices to different states of nature. To date, then, does the current version of State of Nature explain the cross-section of asset returns with high explanatory power? No. In the natural sciences, the state-space mathematical model addresses a variety of complex applications. It seems that the concept of the State of Nature may be too ambitious and abstract. Do you think a comprehensive definition of the state-space of assets could help bridge the gap between theoretical models and empirics? Yes. A comprehensive definition of the state-space of assets could help bridge the gap between theoretical models and empirical findings. By specifying the relevant state variables and their dynamics, a state-space approach would enable the modeling of systematic risks and economic conditions in a structured way, potentially improving the explanatory power of asset pricing models and enhancing their fit with real-world data. Next, we proceed to a hot issue in asset pricing, involving the incompatibility of flat regressions for describing heterogeneous anomalies and how it can be tackled with data science. In the previous sections, we discussed several topics including the gap between theory and empirics, limitation of single homogeneous mechanisms for explaining asset returns, and the complexity inherent in the state of nature. You are also, of course, familiar with another asset pricing nightmare coined the Factor Zoo. Do you think all these problems share a common origin stemming from the complex combination of heterogeneous effects? The shared challenges in asset pricing, whether the empirical gap, single-factor limitations, or the factor zoo, can indeed be traced to the complex and time-varying combination of heterogeneous effects. As Cochrane, Mele, and Duffy point out, traditional models often struggle with dynamic heterogeneity in preferences, constraints, and macroeconomic conditions, leading to persistent empirical puzzles and an explosion in the number of explanatory factors. Integrating time-varying factors and agent heterogeneity into more advanced models is essential for bridging these gaps. Lately, the limitation of linear regression models have been increasingly addressed through advanced data science techniques, such as neural networks. In contrast with image processing, though, the convolution networks and feature maps are not directly applicable to cross-sectional return data. As a result, the corresponding networks in the asset pricing literature do not exceed a few layers. I know you work closely with data scientists, so I am curious to hear your opinion. While recent transformer-based approaches show promise for time series studies, are deep learning applications well-suited or not for modeling cross-sectional asset data? Deep learning methods, while theoretically powerful due to their ability to model nonlinear relationships, are not well suited for modeling cross-sectional asset data in their current form. Financial data sets tend to be small and noisy, which leads to challenges with overfitting and interpretability. Furthermore, neural networks and asset pricing are typically shallow, with two to four layers, limiting their expressiveness. 
While transformer-based models are showing promise in time series studies, their applicability to cross-sectional data remains limited. As such, deep learning should be applied with caution and in combination with more interpretable models to achieve practical results in asset pricing. Regarding other models, from my understanding, decision trees with their hierarchical structure of piecewise divisions seem to align more naturally for capturing the heterogeneity in asset pricing regressions. Do you agree the decision tree approach, especially the two major versions, random forest and gradient boosting trees, is currently the better candidate for modeling asset cross-sectional data? Yes. Decision trees, especially random forests and gradient boosting trees, are excellent candidates for modeling cross-sectional asset data due to their ability to handle heterogeneity and nonlinear relationships effectively. Their hierarchical piecewise structure naturally segments the data, capturing complex interactions while offering interpretability. However, advanced versions like XGBoost and LightGBM often provide better accuracy and efficiency, making them strong alternatives. Overall, ensemble tree-based models are well-suited for asset pricing tasks. A point of clarification. XGBoost and LightGBM are just open-source implementations of Gradient Boosting Tree Approach? Yes. Regarding interpretability, I tend to be skeptical about the high interpretability attributed to decision trees, and curious to hear your thoughts on another approach based on the linear tree. In contrast with the conventional versions, linear trees partition multidimensional space into regions with continuous relationships. While, to my knowledge, no open source implementation exists yet. What do you think about the potential of linear trees, particularly for developing transparent theoretical models? Linear trees have significant potential for developing transparent theoretical models in asset pricing by combining the flexibility of decision trees with the interpretability of linear regressions. Their ability to partition data into regions with continuous, locally linear relationships makes them well-suited for capturing the heterogeneity in asset returns while maintaining theoretical clarity. Although not yet widely implemented, linear trees offer a promising alternative to traditional models and more complex, less interpretable approaches like neural networks. Now let's take a closer look at the proposed hierarchical state-based asset pricing model. Now, on the topic of new directions in asset pricing, I know you have also read the paper, A Hierarchical State-Based Asset Pricing Model. How would you summarize it? The paper proposes an innovative approach to asset pricing by incorporating a hierarchical state-based model. This model extends traditional asset pricing frameworks by introducing a state space of assets, which integrates macroeconomic and fundamental characteristics into asset evaluation. The hierarchical model addresses heterogeneity in asset returns through explanatory gain decomposition, which enhances the explanatory power of regressions. By leveraging data science techniques, it systematically dissects the complex relationship between price to fundamental ratios and asset quality, significantly improving R squared in empirical analyses. This approach bridges the gap between theoretical models and the growing stack of empirical data, aiming to align financial economics with modern machine learning methods. From my understanding, then, the proposed model is based on two major ideas, the state of asset and the hierarchical structure of this state space that captures heterogeneous effects. Yes. So how original is the proposed hierarchical state-based asset pricing model and these two key ideas? Could you provide the closest related journal paper? The hierarchical state-based asset pricing model proposed by Malitsky is original in its introduction of a state of asset and hierarchical structure to capture heterogeneity, which contrasts with the flat regressions of traditional models. While other works, such as Gu and Team and Kelly and Xu, apply machine learning and statistical techniques, they do not fully incorporate the multi-layered asset state space approach Malitsky proposes. This hierarchical framework significantly advances asset pricing theory by offering a detailed, structured method to explain anomalies like the value growth puzzle in a way that previous models have not. Previously, you mentioned that further research over the next decade or more will be necessary for explicitly explaining the value versus growth anomaly. Can the proposed hierarchical state-based direction speed up the process to, say, a few years? Yes. 
Well, with the recent tremendous success of DeepMind Alpha Proof for achieving the silver medal at solving math olympiads, can LLM reasoning help in directly deriving theoretical asset pricing models with the proposed asset state space representation? Yes. Large language models with advanced reasoning capabilities have shown remarkable progress in solving complex mathematical problems, and they can potentially assist in directly deriving theoretical asset pricing models using the proposed asset state space representation. LM reasoning can assist in deriving asset pricing models as follows. First, advanced mathematical derivation. Second, integration of multidisciplinary knowledge. Third, generating novel insights and hypotheses. And fourth, problem-solving capabilities. With that, we conclude today's discussion. I would like to thank again the guest professor and to thank you, our audience, for joining in. What were your thoughts on the key insights? Agree? Or not yet? Let me know in the comments below. And lastly, stay tuned for the interview with our next guest on data science and finance. See you then.